Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. Hi, and welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community. I'm Mary Kate Carpetris, and with me today is designer Allison Glass. Hi. Hi. Allison is here to show us her techniques for foundation piecing, and you brought along one of your patterns. She's a pattern designer as mm -hmm. well as a fabric designer and thread designer. And all those other good things, but let's right, talk about right. this pattern. Great. This is uh, one of our patterns. It's called Feathers. It is based on one of my fabric designs. It's a large scale blown up version of that design. Okay. And so that was a really fun way to take something and make it something new and different. Mm -hmm. um, so we today will look at um, the one of the templates within this pattern and get some techniques on how to do that. Great, great. Mm -hmm. And as you, um, we were talking about it before about how foundation piecing really opens up possibilities for creating new designs that would be hard to achieve with traditional piecing. Right, right, definitely. I really like foundation paper piecing because um, I get a little hung up sometimes on having to cut the shape so exact or mm -hmm. use a template and cut around things. Mm -hmm. With paper piecing, you are just um, using an ample amount of fabric and you're actually, you end up um, actually sewing the fabric onto the template. Mm -hmm. So instead of having to cut really precisely, you're using the um, guidelines to get your precision. Mm -hmm. And I, I love how precise things end up looking yeah. without all the fiddly cutting. Yes. So it's a technique I really personally enjoy a lot. This is the quilt that is on the cover of our pattern. Um, mm, nice. It uses um, sunprint fabric from uh, my line with Andover Fabric called Sunprint. Um, so we did a really uh, spectrum full of color for this quilt. It mm -hmm. goes from the pinks and reds all the way over to the purples on the other mm -hmm. side. And um, something that I really like about this pattern and something that we really tried to do with it was that we wanted to make it as flexible and as useful as possible for people. So you see the quilt set up in the arrangement that it is, but the blocks are all set up so that people can arrange it however they want. Nice. Um, they can adjust the size of it. This is a great example of that where we took the template and shrunk it down smaller, made this really cute pouch with it. And you don't have to do any of the math. No, there's there's no math. There's no math. There's just sewing and, and just a photocopier cutting, and right, make it bigger copier. or smaller. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Can there's I real this. quick? I, oh, I wanted sure. to open this up really fast if I can because I remember that this is a good example of the templates used in another way, where we actually um, made a arrow oh, shape. Oh, nice. That's same fun. templates, just arranged in a different way. Uh huh. And so somebody could do that on the back or make it in the front. It could if be they its own. To. It mm -hmm. could be its own pattern. Um, this is a pattern that I co-wrote with my good friend, Nydia Kenley. She helps out with a lot of things, and this was the original quilt that she made for the pattern out of solids. She loves purples and kind of dark colors, and I think this is just a really gorgeous, um, uh, you know, another completely different look mm -hmm. using all the same templates, but a, a, a version that if you wanted something really sophisticated, you could, right. you could do. So, yeah. Beautiful. Um, yeah. It's fun to see everyone's um, ideas popping up around the internet and mm -hmm. all, the, all the different designs that are showing up. So let's get started with right. how to do this. Um, here's our pattern. Some foundation and paper piece patterns include cut, cutting guides, some don't. We really wanted to include one because we think it makes it a lot easier It helps for reduce people. the waste because if you don't know, you might end up just you know, generally just cutting off a big hunk of fabric, and right. then there is a, there's a lot more waste with foundation piecing there than is. with traditional there piecing. Right. That's the one drawback. But this is nice to there have is. a chart that you can follow to to reduce that waste. Yeah, and the other really nice thing about the chart is if you were doing uh, whatever you are setting out to do, if you wanted to do all the cutting on the front end and get that all yeah. out of the way, right. you can do batch cutting and right. really go through it really quickly. You just figure out how many of each size you need and um, and get it get it all done. Yes. So. I'm going to stick that over there. Mm -hmm. um, these are the templates that come with it. There's there's quite a few. And then I have my 1A template, which is the one that we're going to be using all set up and ready to go. Okay. Um, 
This is just a little bit of extra fabric. I was going to show quickly about the batch cutting. I just took this uh, longer piece of the pattern print and I folded it over so that I can actually be cutting three at a time with this. Mm -hmm. And then on my handy guide on block A for the feathers part, it needs to be eight inches by 1.75. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball that with this ruler. And there's my 1.75. And then if I wanna quickly trim these edges, I end up with very, in a fast way, mm -hmm. three. Um, you can see how quick that can go. Right. If you really get a rhythm going, you can have a, a lot together and cut out fairly quickly. So that is the cutting. Then our next step is to um, work on positioning the fabrics onto the template. And this is when getting started, if you're new to foundation piecing, paper piecing, this can require maybe just a little thought. You know, yes. once you get started, yes. once you get started and get into your rhythm, you're fine, but this might take a little right. bit. Right, it of does, like it does. And something I like about light. this pattern is that it is, all the, all the pieces that you need to sew together are fairly large. Yes. Um, there's not a lot of little teeny yeah. itty bitty bits. So even though it's a large, quilt, I think it's a, a pretty good introduction for people to mm -hmm. really get a good feel for, okay, how do I do this? Right. Without having to fiddle with a whole bunch of little tiny pieces, yes. which can be kind of a lot. Um, one quick thing I wanted to mention was when you're doing foundation piecing, it's um, really important to use a smaller stitch length, mm -hmm. so maybe 1.5 or 2. Um, the reason for that is that um, the, the holes that the needle makes in the templates actually become very helpful in removing the paper later. So you're almost creating a, uh, a perforation. Mm -hmm. We are creating a perforation. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, I'll share some other tips on how to get the paper out okay. easily. Because that can be but the most tedious part. It can, and some people really don't like the idea of having to sit there and take out all that yeah. paper. But there's some ways Fire to up the Netflix, make it a lot easier. Binge watch exactly. a show and just take out all the paper. Or teach your kids how to take out the there paper. There you go, there they, you that, go. That's what we do at my house. They, <laughs> we set them up and they watch movies and take out all the paper for me. Um, okay. So yes, a, a smaller stitch length. Um, you can copy the templates just on regular copy paper. Mm -hmm. The lower quality, the better, because it doesn't. if it's really stiff, nice paper, it's just harder to get out. Sure. So there's no really, there's no good reason to do that. So the lines on the template are going to become the sew lines. The fabric itself is actually placed on the unprinted side mm -hmm. of the template. And those, those lines are, where, are showing you exactly where you're going to sew. Um, so what you want to do is each of the shapes in the template are numbered. So you just start with number one, mm -hmm. move to two, three, four, five, and on until you're done. Um, the line in between the numbers is the first line you're going to sew. So what I've done here is I've lined up my first piece that's going in my number one spot and I am looking to be sure that the entire area is going to be covered by that piece of fabric, mm -hmm. and it is, so we're good to go. So I'm gonna flip that back over, and then I know that my number two piece is up here in the corner. Mm -hmm. So here's my larger rectangle, and this rectangle in this case ends up being for both the bottom and the top triangle. Okay. Um, just something to know about the template noted in there, but just and something to realize. And you line up realize. those raw edges. Mm -hmm. You line up the raw edges, and then I like to fold it back just to make sure that I have, um, that I really am going to be covering up all of the, um, that, that for one thing, I'll catch all of the fabric here. In this case, it's really not a big deal because there's so much extra fabric there, but if there was not as much extra fabric, it'd be important to make sure that you are yes. getting the fabric within the stitch line. Um, and then another thing I like to do is once I kind of finger press that a little bit, then I can use that line to fold it this way and make sure that it's covering the whole next shape in the template that mm -hmm. I need to cover. That's important. Okay. So from here, some people like to put a little pin in there. I tend to just like to hold it okay. tight to skip a pin step. Any step I can skip um, in order to simplify the steps and make it go faster, I like to do. And I'm just going to start sewing along that line. And you just sew right off the paper? I sew right off the paper. Um, people can have a lot of choices that they can make as far as, you know, do you want a backstitch, mm -hmm. do you not? Um, in this particular quilt, all of those lines will get sewn together anyway, and I'm not too concerned about mm -hmm. it coming undone. So I just keep going. Again, it's to 
move faster. Sure. So. Okay, the next thing that we do is iron. There's a lot of ironing and trimming and cutting and a lot of back and forth with um, foundation piecing. Mm -hmm. So I really like to have a nice setup like this where you can easily move from one, one area to the next without a lot of movement of your body. Okay. Saves time again. So you just um, fold those up where they go and give it a nice press. And then that is good to go. Your next step is to open it back up because you need to, it's good to trim this fabric. It's good to keep it, you know, about a quarter of an inch that helps to, it to not get too bulky. Yes. Um, the other, this is my best tip for paper piecing, foundation piecing rather, is um, when you go to trim this, go ahead and fold the paper piece back um, the other direction along that perforation line. And what that does is it's just like if you have a piece of notebook paper in a, in a spiral and you need to tear it out, if you mm -hmm. fold along the perforation mm -hmm. first, it's going to come in a lot easier. Right. So it'll just make it easier down the line. Right. So while this seems like another step, it really saves so much time when you go to do the um, taking the paper out. Mm -hmm. So then I'll just line up the ruler with the uh, sew line and trim that to a fourth of an inch. Get a nice little even line there. Great. And your first two sections are attached. Yes. Nice and easy. Mm -hmm. um, let's do another one. Let's do one more just another to kind of get, sometimes if you're, again, if you're new to um, foundation piecing or paper piecing, just the visual spatial aspect of where you put things and, and how you right. flip them and where they go right. can take a little it can. going. It can. So, and I noticed you're using this, this great chambray. Oh, yes. Does it have a right or a wrong side? I don't know um, enough about chambray to know if there's scientifically is a... Right I side or wrong side. technically I think that there is. I know it always comes with a sticker sure. <laughs> that says face side. Okay, but it doesn't but they seem look to... really similar. Yeah. Okay, but so, you would want at this step. Where would you want the right side of the fabric? At this step, you would want the your new piece that you're adding. The right That's side should down. be touching each okay. other. So there they are touching. I have the edges lined up for now. I'm going to fold this back to. Or I can I can see the line yep, through it. I can see it. I'm gonna make a little finger press there, okay. and just because I hate to do it and then have to take it out if I didn't if I didn't leave myself enough room with the next shape, I really do like to fold this part back over and make sure that it's covering all of that mm -hmm. shape, and it is. So we're good to go. So again, just like before, I'm gonna come over to the sewing machine, hold that nice and tight on there, and sew your line. Okay, that's out. We'll do the same thing again. Press this down mm -hmm. first. Open it back up. Fold your paper back. Get that out of the way and get another good helping with your eventual tear line. Trim You've got it. all of these raw edges now falling off the paper, but you're not going to trim any of that right now, as weird as it looks. Right. There's no real big reason to trim any of it at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, that's your right. next row. And basically you just do the same thing, filling up the whole template until you get to the end. And um, let's see, we have yeah, one, we have a, a couple at... that are have been filled in all the way. This is our A block. Mm -hmm. so that's the one we were working on. Mm -hmm. And then this is a B block. It's the one that goes next to it. So you can see. And, well, yeah, they, it gets, I don't know how we did well, that. The, the, yeah, well, the, the patterns get reversed. Right, they do. So, so um, your next step in doing this is to actually trim off all of that extra part. And I think this is just probably the best part of the whole thing yeah. because, this is where the magic As you happens. can see, you take away all your little randomy bits. That edge is already trimmed, it looks like. And once I cut around the whole shape, I'll, you flip it over, you have this lovely, beautiful, perfectly done Wonderful. block. And then you would, you would do the same thing to this. Mm -hmm. And then in your pattern, those are separated by a sashing strip, is that correct? Yes. Um, but then you would just continue to join. Um, so you still have your, your seam line. 
mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. but um, you're stitching with a quarter inch seam and that's what that's indicating, correct? Right, on this template, the, the, the dark black line is, is the next sew line. Mm -hmm. So when you're attaching the sash to that, you're just sewing it along the black sew line. The mm -hmm. quarter inch is already um, included in there for you. So if anybody ever has any questions about what is a quarter inch, mm -hmm. it, it, that's it, it's right there. So eat nice and easy and good to go. So then you just join them with your sashing, you mm -hmm. make your blocks out mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. And then at what point do you remove your papers? We were talking about that earlier, but when do you actually remove it all? People do different things. I really like to wait until the very end when okay. it's all together, or at least the very end of whatever section you're doing so that you're not um, stretching the fabric. Yeah. Um, I also, I, I really like really this to have this seam line. A person could technically take the paper out before sewing that, but I like to have the line there. I mean, why not? It mm -hmm. tells you where to sew. Um, so just so people can see, I'll take a couple of these papers out. Okay. Um, this one has already been... It has little tiny stitches on it to make a nice perfor perforation. It's been folded back a couple times and see how easy that tears yeah, out? Absolutely. It's really not a big deal at all. Your next one, you will need to just sort of pull it out from the other side. I like to fold it again and again just because it makes it so much easier. Yeah. You just keep going. You know, the little bits you can pick off if you, if you need to, but mm -hmm. it's not hard to get the paper out if you've taken the time to do the steps as you go. Great. Well, let's take a look at one other example of a foundation piece block with sure, this fabric. Sure. That's really nice. Thank you. This yeah. is a um, another uh, quilt that Nitty and I wrote together. This is actually one of her block designs. And um, she and I put it together to be a free-to-use quilt on the end of her website. Okay. So this is a pattern that people can go there and download and do whatever they want with. Mm -hmm. The other, the feathers pattern is available through... Uh, my shop on my website, mm -hmm. alisonglass.com, and also at a lot of online and um, brick and mortar quilt shops. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming and showing this technique mm -hmm. with your beautiful pattern and Thank your fabrics, you. and working with the chambray too is um, a really nice touch. So thanks so much for joining us, and be sure to check the website for our other episodes featuring Allison. We hope to see you next time. Take care. Bye bye. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.